after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending immense greetings and salutations upon the final Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Continuing our journey and looking at the bad moral values that some of us Muslims have or we're surrounded by. And the intent of this series is for a person to change themselves and to change their lives. Because the problems that we face on the, on the face of this earth at the moment, the solution is a simple solution. All of us know the problems that we're facing, the difficulties, the trials, the tribulations, and today we face the various forms of lockdown that we find. The solution is one, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ To flee back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To repent back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the individual to change himself. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيْرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيْرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never change the condition of a people until they don't change their own selves. Thus you find that sometimes we see ayatim mufassalat. We see signs after signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just like we find unfortunate Fir'aun and his people, they did not believe, did not repent. We find there may be some of us, we don't see these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and return back to him. أَوَلَا يَرَوْنَ أَنَّهُمْ يُفْتَنُونَ فِي كُلِّ عَامٍ مَرَّةً أَوْ مَرَّتَيْنِ ثُمَّ لَا يَتُوبُونَ وَلَا هُمْ يَذَّكَّرُونَ Don't people see that maybe once or twice in a year that we place some difficulties, some calamities upon you that you may repent back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you begin to reflect and begin to ponder. Likewise, another place in the Quran inside Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah mentions, why don't they repent back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa yastaghfirunahu and seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of this that we find around us are signs and symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهِ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ No one can estimate the estimation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can encompass Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The grandeur, the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. حِكْمَةُ اللَّهِ بَالِغَةً That means wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can ever understand and will ever, ever understand. And all of this is from min hikam illayhi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the believer is the only one that returns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for these individuals that we find life for them, it's just play and amusement and continuing their journey. أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ You think we created you in vanity with no purpose, no ghaya, bila qaslin, no intent, just for people to enjoy their lives and carry on what they're doing. These people don't seem to reflect over the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sanurihim ayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyanahum annaw al-haq. We will show them our signs everywhere around them, the horizons. Hatta another place in the Quran wa fi anfusikum afala tubusirun. Within your own selves, we show you the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why don't you visualize, see these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So believers are those individuals. The intent of all of this series that we've been following, that these bad moral values inside our society, that we need to stay away from them. We need to change ourselves. We shouldn't just become, it becomes a formality that many people with a good intent possibly want to come to Yawmul Jum'ah. They want to come back to the masjid. But the masjid and the khutab, the masajid, it should be one of changing the individual. At-taqarrub ilallahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bringing them close proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remind them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ Remind them about the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what the masjid is. That's what as-salah is. إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ As-salah takes you away from al-fawahish, illicit misconduct, promiscuity, lewdness, wickedness, all types of evil actions. As-salah تُغَيْرُ الشَّخْصِ the prayer, it changes the individual. It's nur fi quburikum, light inside your graves. Light for you inside this dunya takes you away. Min adhulumati ila nur. Takes you away from the realms of darknesses to the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only for the person who understands the magnitude and the power of as salah. Wasta'inu bi sabri was salah. Wa innaha la kabiratun illa ala al khashi'een. Seek aid and assistance via the prayer. It's going to be difficult. Except for those individuals who have khushu lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qad aflah al-mu'minun alladhi lahum fi salatim khashi'oon. In the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah mentions these ten or so characteristics of the believing individuals. Successful are those individuals 
awwal sifa lahum. The first characteristic for these individuals are those individuals inside this salah, they find submissiveness. Those are the real believers who are missing the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It raises their iman. Give glad tidings to those individuals in the realms of darknesses, in the early morning and the late night. Salatul Fajr, Salatul Isha. Walking in the realms of darknesses, give them glad tidings of paradise. Testify for them that these are people of iman. Those are the real believers who are missing the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Missing to come and to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To raise their iman. To remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to change themselves. And thus we find that these sins that we're surrounded by. Unfortunately, we find that some of us Muslims, as time and time we've mentioned, it's become common practice amongst us Muslims as well. We delve in these sins. The influence of the society around us has crept deep into our hearts that we begin to behave like these individuals. The Quran mentions, These people never be happy with you until you don't follow the Milla. Milla, kalima, daqiqa, has a deep meaning. About following everything about these individuals that you find. Their imitation inside their dress sense, their speech, their etiquettes. Everything about them we find that many of us Muslims begin to sway away. We begin to have the etiquettes of these individuals. The Prophet ﷺ, he, he warned us. Man minhum. Whoever begins to imitate a people, he becomes eventually like them. Eventually you become like the people he begins to imitate. So by the taqalid that we find some things that we imitate of these individuals. They lead us to begin to follow them towards a path of kufr, of disbelief and rejection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thus we find we as practitioners need to tackle mainstream issues that we're facing. Because there is, a, unfortunately, I hate to use such words, but a super, superficial practice of Islam. It's an external garment or a garb, not to sound derogatory, that people may dress as a Muslim. People may approach themselves as being Muslims. But the inner core element, and I would not be extreme in saying of many Muslims, is corrupt. Many Muslims is corrupt living inside the Western environment because the influence of the society around us has crept within ourselves. That is just a superficial display of Islam. We find amongst us Muslims that we find, we find serious problems that we find. Whether it be problems of abuse, of oppression, of drugs, of alcohol, of gambling. We find addiction inside our society. Some of us may want to shy away from it, but we have some serious problems amongst our own Muslims. Speak to any of the a'imma. Speak to any of the imams, the khutaba. They will highlight to you that we, we have physical abuse of men carrying out upon their family members, upon their children, upon their wife. We have mental abuse being carried out upon people that we find excessive elements of drug abuse inside our society. Alcohol abuse and gambling that we find that exists inside our society. These are problems that we as, as Muslims, as Masajid, we need to tackle. We shouldn't hide the fact that we have problems inside our society. A person who lives inside a society tackles the society around them. Tackles the challenges. What we're facing inside our society. If we begin to turn away, then we find that this evil will begin to spread even more inside our society. That's in today's hadith that we find. And Abdullah ibn Amr and the Nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Anil Khamri Wal Maysir that the Prophet Sallallahu he prohibited us, made it haram to enter into any form of alcohol, of any form of intoxication, of gambling, Wal Kubati Wal Ghubayra. Wa kullu muskar in haram in the hadith of Sunan Abi Dawood that we find. Inside this hadith, many times these topics that we touched upon, Al Khamr, the amount of times we've spoken about alcohol, intoxicants, Wa kullu muskar in haram. Everything that intoxicates the mind of the individual, tobacco, shisha, drugs, all of this is muskir. All is whatever it takes away the mind of the individual is a form of khimar. Ma yughati al aqal, as the ulama have described, al khimar is whatever in, in, in covers, shrouds the mind, takes away your senses. Ma askar kathir hu faqalilu haram fi hadith Imam Muslim, Sahih Muslim that we find. Whatever intoxicates you in large amounts. Is forbidden inside small amounts. Then the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned Al-Kuba. Kuba qad fusir an naw'an min al-tabl. Is a, a form of drum that we find, a specific shape of drum that we find, as ulama have described, which is related to musical instruments. There are many times we spoke about this as well. Surah Luqman, the 31st surah, verse number 6. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهُ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُدِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ 
read the works of the Mufassirin, Ibn Kathir, Imam Suyut fi Durr al Manthur. Read all the aqwal that they mention. That what is lahw al hadith? Even if a person goes to review, it's not music. Lahw al hadith is vulgar speech, evil speech, vain speech. Compare that to all of what the, most of the people listening today. Rap music, drill music, grime. Listen to the kalimat. Listen to the words that these people that they use. Ma'ind al ghaya, fawahish. Explicit words that we find are used. والرسول عليه السلام ما كان فاحشا ولا متفحشا. The Prophet عليه السلام never listened to anything which is immoral, never entertained anything which is immoral, never remained inside that suhba. So that's when we say that the youth are facing problems. This is the beginning of their indoctrination going into their mind, into their heart, placing this inside their hearts. That's Abdullah bin Mas'ud. He mentioned that the heart of the believer is a vessel. It can't contain two things. It cannot contain Sawtu Rahman, the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Kalamullah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and was Sawtu Shaytan. Ahadahuma yaghlib ala akhar. One of them will overcome the other. So the person fills their ears, fills their heart with these evil words. It will overcome them eventually that they begin to walk away from the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal Ghubayra. Naun min al Khumur fi bilad al Habasha. Al Ghubayra is made from millets, from grains, a type of liquor that we find, alcohol that we find. 10 million tons or so produced on a year, an annual basis inside the, the land of India. That they make this, this wine, they make this drink. This was mentioned by the Prophet some centuries ago, the land of Habasha used to extract from these grains and make this alcoholic drink that we find. وَكُلُّ مُسْكِرٍ حَرَامٍ Then he mentioned every intoxicant is haram. But what concerns us inside this, inside this hadith is al-maysir is gambling. And if you look at inside all the ahadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, we look at the Quran, you find always the Quran and the hadith, it mentions al-khamr wal-maysir. It mentions alcohol and gambling together. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begin to mention these two evils together? Naha and al khamri wal-maysir. For what reason? Because you find they go hand in hand. Wherever you find alcohol, you'll find gambling. Wherever you find gambling, you find alcohol. Or eventually, over time, you find both of these two things will begin to coexist. One leads to another. That's the general den of vice that we find. That's what ulama mentioned. A person should be careful of sins, any sin. Because one sin is a domino effect to another sin. As we mentioned, many people will take drugs. The opening door of the taking of drugs is tobacco, is cigarettes. Prior to that, it's, it's, it's suhbah, it's companionship. Bad friendship, sitting with people who have these evil traits that eventually it begins to influence them. That try this. Come in Shababina. How many of our youth? How many of our youth are good individuals? But sitting with the wrong crowd, doors of vice are open to them. That they even they say themselves, if only I never was engaged with such individuals. That's on a day a general person will say, Ya laytani wo upon me. It takhattu fulan khalila. Wo upon me. I took such and such individual as a friend. He took me away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was a person who used to pray. I used to fast. I used to come to the masjid. This person, he dragged me away. He influenced me. Obviously, the sin is going to be upon the person themselves. But some element of influence overrides certain individuals. Because some of us are not strong characteristic individuals. We're not strong personalities. Wherever the wind blows, we begin to follow that path. A person should develop their personality to be shaksi al qawiyya, strong personality. It's very difficult to influence an individual whose iman is rasikh, is firm, who believes deeply in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's as I mentioned, a superficial garment. How does that person delve into such evil sins? Because their iman is not rasikh, their iman is not firm. They're just worried about qila wa qal, external issues, this and that and that and the other. Rakkisu ala anfusikum. Focus upon your own self to be a strong personality. Strong personality within your home, with your children, with your wife, with your family members. That's what a real personality is. Come min al-ashkhaz. How many people come to the a'imma and say, what is this Islam that your children are practice? That these people around you are practice, practicing? You think this is practicing Islam? Yal'an wa yashtam abahu. 
curses and reviles his own parents. Reviles them, curses them. Yukafiruhuma. Makes takfir upon them. They're evil, they're wicked, this, this, this. Wahada shaykhs zahiran. Yutabbiku sunnah. Zahiran is a person of sunnah. But this is how he treats his parents. This is how he speaks to them. Wasahibhuma fi dunya ma'arufa. Quran says, follow your parents in goodness. Even if happen to be disbelieving individuals, you leave them in that which is disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other than that, if your parents are disbelieving parents, وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا Remain in good companionship with them. Be good to them. وَأَمَّا نَحْنُ الْمُسْلِمُونَ The Quran says, وَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا كَلِمَ أُف كَلِمَ بَصِيطَ عند, عند اللغويين ولكن عند القرآن كلمة كبيرة نوع من الشتم وَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُف Don't even say أُف to your parents. Linguistically it has no meaning. It's a light word. It's just a tat. It's just a, it's a sound of the, of, the, of the lips. That's all it is. But the Quran says, don't even say that to your parents. Lower the wings of mercy to your parents. Just pray for them. وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا Oh Lord, have mercy upon them when they nourished me. They cherished me. They brought me up once I was a young individual. This is what Islam is. This is what Islam is. Quran begins by highlighting this. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا This is what the teachings of Quran is that we've forgotten many of us. Worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then be good to your parents. Not good to everybody around you. Friends around you, people around you. Speak to them in loving words and kind words and humble yourself. Bring your hum humility. Begin it with your parents. As you find that parents are the gates of Jannah of Paradise. If your parents are lost, a person should be fretting, should be despairing, should be upset that the two doors are broken of Paradise. The entry of Paradise has been blocked for that individual or make it more difficult for that individual. Likewise, both these elements, Al-Khamr al maisir are detrimental, are harmful for the individ individual. Physically and mentally, study the effects of gambling, the effects of Khamr that we find. People are taking drugs at the moment. Look at their personalities. Look at their personalities. Schizophrenia that they suffer from. People talk about marijuana, cannabis being a mild drug. Studies have proven it, it kills your brain cells. It destroys them. That's why many of our shabab, they can't accept. Because the first problem that we're facing is to recognize your sin. Recognize it's an evil action, not to defend it. To conceal it. This is the first problem that we face inside our society. And the biggest evil that we face inside our society is Muslims. And many times we mention this. Is the Muslims who begin to traffic these evil substances. That is the biggest calamity that we're facing inside our society. That Muslims, ma yukhafoon Allah. They don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They worship the dinar wa dirham and their status and their pride and their postcodes. That's what they worship. And they're willing to infiltrate inside our society these haram substances for the sake of their own greed, of the wealth they want to possess. And once again, we shouldn't shy away from the fact it is rampant inside this society. People like us imams who don't even know people. We visualize it on a daily basis on the streets. Muslims who are serving drugs. Muslims trafficking drugs. Muslims indulged in drugs. Muslims threatening other Muslims with violence and crime and even killing them. It's no exaggeration. This is what the peak that we reached. We are claimed to be Muslims. But we have no fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No fear of what was the repercussions. And people take these substances. The repercussion that we can see, many of us, 30, 40 years of life, many of our friends that we can see. You can see them, the state of these individuals, of what drugs has done to them. And this is no ex exaggeration. Some of these people, you can see them on the streets picking up cigarette butts. You can see them on the streets, you feel sorry for them. That this is a person who's my comrade, my class fellow, who studied with me, who lived with me, who worked with me. This is what he has become. Because of what? The taking of these evil substances. person feels upset that what has happened to this individual. And this is the masses of our community, what we're facing. And we turn a blind eye to this.
So that's in short terms, both of these elements are an addiction. They are an addiction inside our society. The taking of intoxicants of drugs and gambling that we find is an addiction. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ They ask you about gambling and wine. Say in them is a sin. وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِنْ نَفْعِهِمَا And their sin is far greater than their benefit. The small benefit that people may gain. Another place inside the Quran, inside Surah Al-Ma'idah, verses 19-91, Allah mentions, يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَنصَابُ وَالْأَزْلَامُ رِجْسٌ مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِنْ يُوْقِعَ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ فِي الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ وَيَصُدَّكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّيْبَ عَنِ السَّلَافِ فَهَلْ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُنْتَهُونَ Even read these ayat inside the English language. There's no powerful kalimat inside the Arabic language which makes something haram inside the Qur'an. There's no other greater depiction inside the Qur'an. Allah يقارن الخمر والميسر مع الشرك والأزلام مع الكفر والشرك الله equates alcohol, intoxicants, gambling with shirk, with kufr that's you find in other narrations that some ulama have authenticated مدمن الخمر كعابد الوثن لا يدخل الجنة but the riwayat that you find person who's addicted to alcohol is a worshipper of an idol, of a statue why is that parable given inside the hadith based upon this ayah inside the Qur'an? In the hadith it mentions a person who's addicted to alcohol. لا يدخل الجنة ولا enter into paradise. Harsh words. Why? Because of the dangerous elements of these addictions that we find inside our society. And thus we find all of these actions inside this hadith inside the Qur'an are all the filthy handiwork of the devil. That a person needs to abstain. فَجْتَنِبُوهُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Stay away from it, you may become successful individuals. Al Maysir, Qala Imam Mujahid, Tilmidh ibn Abbas. Al Maysir that you find, Ishtiqaqu min al Yusr, is taken from ease, easiness. Because gambling in general, that you find, is a person gains wealth via an easy use, usage. Bi Yusin was Sahula, Biduni Kaddin wala Ta'bin. Person with via ease gains this wealth. People may think that it's a skill or whatever it may be, but it's a, that's what it is. Any game of chance, of risk that we find from either party or both parties that we find is forbidden. That's what the Fuqah speak about, the, the, the priest Islamic practice of Quraysh that we find, of, of, of Juzur that we find, the camels that we find, that they put place lots. And you find that six or seven of the parties who gain their lot, the share of the camel, and the other three will be at a loss. All this is mason, is gambling that we find. And today's world that we find the types of gambling that we find that exist, min al-kabair, Imam Dhahabi mentions that if a person says inside a hadith, ta'al uqamiruka, come, let us, let us come gamble together, just, just by game, just by playing a game. Just says that to an individual, without physically placing any money there. Fal yatasaddaq. So let that person give some charity, expiation. Fa idha kana mujarradul kalima ma'asiyah. If just saying the words, come let us gamble, is a sin. So how about physically taking part inside gambling? Is min al kabai that we find. And that's we find, wa yasuddakum an dhikri lay wa anis salah. This takes you away from the dhikr of Allah. Gambling takes a person away from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a side point, al-ab, any game in general is, is mubah, is permissible. But if it begins to contain these elements of addiction, of taking away from the dhikr of Allah, tusbih haraman. So many the, the gaming world that we find, many people they play games, la haraj fi dhalik. But in the gaming world, they're playing of FIFA, Fortnite, or these war games that we find. Ashra sa'at, laysa mubaligha. Hours on end, grown up men will play these games. They will neglect their family, neglect their chores, neglect their work, neglect their religious practices. Hours on end they will play these games, grown-up men. Ignore children for a moment, games like Fortnite that we find that hours on end children are playing it. Or mesmerizing their, their mind. Games are allowed, but if it takes, away, takes you away from dhikr of Allah, your Islamic duties, your religious duties, your daily duties, it becomes haram. It becomes forbidden for you. 
anything that takes you away from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes haram. Even if it's something which is permissible. Because we haven't been placed on this world to spend our efforts to be playing games. Our effort just to play games. I understand raha, nis sa'a, sa'a, half an hour, half an hour, in the weekend, a, f a few moments. But this becomes the life of many of us. Then we, then we speak about the Muslim ummah. Then we speak about how we're going to raise a peak. Ulu al -himma. A Muslim ummah is people of ulul azmi. Of high spiritual ranking, conviction, effort, tireless effort. That's what a Muslim ummah is. Muslim ummah isn't just a lazy ummah, complacent ummah, playing games, passing their time, just speaking about the world, speaking about the politics. It involves striving and struggling and awakening of this Muslim ummah that we find. And like all you find, it creates discord and enmity. And you al adawata wal baghda. What does gambling do? Creates animosity, hatred between people that we find. And then we find wamanafi'ul nas. People think that there's some benefit. Inside gambling that we find, but it corrupts people. It leads to immorality, as, as we've mentioned. As for the common form of gambling that we find inside our society. Yanasib, the lottery that we find, the buying of these, these tickets. How many of us, as Muslims, you go inside the shop, you find Muslims buying these scratch cards, buying the lottery. They think nothing of it. Spend a pound here, maybe I may become a millionaire. Read the history about the lottery that we find. You know, some of us may think that maybe I'd become like this, the first individual. The first individual won the lottery in 1994 was a Muslim individual. 17.9 million. Today's term, 30 million pounds. He won. Go and read his history, what happened to this individual. Go and read his history. What was the end of this individual? That some of us may think that, that money will make me do certain good things inside my life. Money is a source of corruption for many of us. That's in a hadith that we find Allah subhanahu wa leaves some of his servants to be in a state of poverty or not giving them much wealth. You know why? Because Allah subhanahu wa knows that if I give my servant this money, قَدْ يَفْسُدُهُ It will corrupt him. It will take him away from the house of Allah. It will take him away from the dhikr of Allah. So Allah knows that I don't want to give this individual this wealth. Wealth is a source of corruption if you don't know how to control it. And thus we find that Muslims who are selling these cards think nothing of it. News agents inside our society, as we began with, Islam is change. Islam isn't tacit approval. Turning a blind eye, well, everybody buys it. What difference does it make to me? There's no harm in me selling it. There's no harm in me selling tobacco. No harm in me selling alcohol. No harm in me selling lottery tickets. I don't do it, but there's no harm in doing it. That's not what Islam is. That is their understanding of a way of life. Tacit approval to everything. Everything, in, that's what we find even amongst us Muslims, that today that we find the challenges that we're facing, tacit approval, LGBT, don't say nothing about it. You're going to be the odd individual. This is an old, old cliche. Get rid of these people who want to be purified individuals. Muslims are in the forefront of highlighting decency. What is morality? What is good character, good behavior inside society that these individuals have forgotten? And then so some of us Muslims that we think to give it to a good cause. Just because the national lottery, 25% of it is given towards charitable causes, it doesn't make it halal. And likewise, the Muslim thinks that if I win some money, I give it to charitable causes, it doesn't make it halal. The end does not justify the means. And likewise, the side point, some Muslims deal in haram. And they say that I give this, some of the money to charity. Inna Allah tayyib wa la yaqbalu illa ma kana tayyibah. Allah is pure, only accepts that which is pure. You can never bring haram wealth and give it to society, give it to Muslims and say this will benefit you. Read the seal of the Quraysh. When they built the Kaaba, rebuilt the Kaaba, they said don't bring any money, not even one dinar, not even one dinar that's been tainted with riba, don't bring it to build the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. mushrikun, polytheists who understood that don't build the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with any interest, any, mo any money that's contaminated with haram. How can we today's Muslims build institutes tainted with haram? Muslim society should be a free society to govern itself, to flourish itself. There should be no external influences from any society that we give you this money so we appoint our imam, we read the script to you, we provide the khutbah to you, we provide to you what to say, what not to say. Al-imam huwa hur. 
The Imam is free to speak from the nusus of the Quran and the Sunnah, not to speak from the regimes of people that they dictate to them that this is the script that you're given and you preach this to the people. That's not what Islam is. That is also an addiction inside a society that we're addicted. We are blind individuals to society. Everything that's brainwashed inside our society, we follow it blindly inside our society. People tell us what to do, what to read, what to write, how to influence society. Don't be taken aback. It's a great big scheme that exists even in the Muslim world to brainwash the Muslim society, to brainwash them, to remain dumb individuals. That we don't seem to understand that even an average individual is overtaken by this addiction to becoming just a simpleton. A simple individual who doesn't really raise any concern. And that's, maybe people think this is strange. But all this addiction is flourishing where? Gambling is rampant amongst Muslim society, Muslim lands. Alcohol is rampant in Muslim lands. Alcohol is served openly in Muslim lands. People may make, give the excuses given to non-Muslims. For ayyu deen hadha? Ayyu sharia? Man min al ajaza? Who amongst the fuqah have allowed the drinking of alcohol? Lil gharbiyin, lil kuffar jais. Who amongst the fuqaha? The most that they've spoken about in certain places they can be pushed aside, ex ex exerted, exerted outside of society and may be allowed. Well, the qawl da'if, a weak statement. But what do we find? But if a person speaks about this, then we say that, why is there problems inside the Muslim society? There's Muslims who are addicted, there's Muslims inside Muslim lands addicted to heroin in the millions. In the millions addicted to heroin. Heroin, ma ma not tasawwar. We can't even understand it. But it exists inside our society because of our complacency of what we see around us. Other forms of gambling that we find inside our society on Yawmul Jum'ah that we find. On this street and the street by the side that we find. And they study in great detail every other place that you find. There'll be a masjid there and there'll be these bookmakers. And you find that these Muslims, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide these individuals. Even Yawmul Jum'ah, Zahir and unknown Muslim. Has, has beautified themselves, dressed as a Muslim, will go and place their gamble before Yom al Jum'ah or after Jum'ah will go and place their gamble. This is what we see inside our society. And when we complain about this towards the people, you know what the non-Muslims say? Most of our clientele are your own Muslims. Most of the clientele who come and visit these bookmakers inside your community are your own Muslims who visit them. What response can we give? What can we say now? That we as, as masajid, or even some masajid don't even want to speak about it, they turn a blind eye to it. It is no exaggeration, there is prostitution that takes place outside the doors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the street corners. Takes place there openly, rampantly on the streets around us. Imams are just, in masjid just worried about the, the colour of their carpet. The display of their masjid. The sanctity of their masjid. Quickly close the doors, get rid of people. As we began with, these are the problems we're facing that people don't want to tackle. They don't want to speak about them. Just place their heads inside the ground. It doesn't exist. These are grown-up men, some of them elderly individuals who place these bets, think nothing of it. Their pastime. These haram actions that we see inside our society that we don't want to address, that we're facing. Horse racing that we find. As sibak bil khayl wal ibal that we find racing with horses and camels that we find. But look how we begin to go beyond the, the bounds that we find even in the Muslim world. I don't want to name places and societies that we find. There's, there's federations of countries that we find who, who breed stallions to come and take part in the Queen's Derby and to run races, place bets upon them. You know, we know that inside the, the Arab uh, history that we find, read, read the, shit, the, the, the poetry of Mutanabbi al Antara. That we find that their poetry is shayr and jahiliya that we find even classical poetry today that we find poetry that we find revolves around three elements al khuyul wal khumur wal nisa that's what their poetry revolves around upon riding beasts about alcohol their banters of drinking amount that they drink and their drunkenness then you find that some of them they write that even when I die that make sure that I'm buried next to the grapevine tree so the juice of the grapevine can enter into my body and nourish me when I'm inside my grave that's how they, they, they depict themselves. And women, that's what their poetry is about. The Quran even speaks about this. These ayat in Surah Al-Adiyat that we find, read the tafsir of these ayat. 
Imam Suyuti, some two or three pages speaking about, about the horses and love of the horses that we find and the descriptive nature of the horses. Some ahadith that we find which are weak, speaking about Fadail Surat Al Adiyat, Ta'dilu Nisful Quran, and Surat Al Zalzala, Al Adiyat, Al Hadith Da'if is weak. But that's to show the magnitude that is occurring in half of the Quran. Wal Adiyat Dabha, the Khuyul, the horses. Wal Dab, who are Sot Min Al Khuyul. At tanafus min al khuyul is the voice or the sound of the horses when they're running. That's what it is. When they're panting, they're running. The striking of their hooves when they hit the ground and sparks come out. All this depictive nature mentioned inside the Quran. But what do we use them for? Just this mere play that we find inside our society. And likewise, we, that we find the casinos around us. Once again, that we find Muslim participation. It's, we shouldn't hide it from the fact. Whether we go to Las Vegas all the way to Edgeway Road in front of us, who do you find participating inside it? Read the stats and the figures of which country spends the most of gambling on the casinos. These are facts and figures that these people have collected, not to tarnish us, because we know that these people are full of facts and figures. Look at the list of the people. Like I said, I don't want to name countries and regimes and people and personalities. We can list them if you want. How many, who spent what on one, what night? Then they have the audacity to tell us, oh, but these people, they may give a million to a panda bear. They may give something to the masjid. You know, it's like one of us flicking a coin. Flick a coin to a beggar. And spending millions on a night. Millions on a night. And then say, well, they do good for the Muslim ummah. The Muslim ummah can do a lot more. But, oh, well, and Adam mal is not your wealth. Adam mal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the wealth of Allah. It's the wealth of Allah. Then it's the wealth of the community, the Muslims that we find. It's rampant in front of us, but like I said, many of us, we just turn a blind eye. That we shouldn't speak about these things. Just let these people do whatever they want to do. Let them live their lives how they want to live. It is a ripple effect upon our society, upon us. It tarnishes us, it destroys us. It destroys our Muslim ummah that we find. And thus we find that these are foolish people that we find who believe inside this gambling element that we find. Read the statistics or a person will gain. In conclusion, that we find gambling is wrong. Because it is a disregard of responsible stewardship. We find gambling is wrong because it involves a chance of gain at the expense of suffering of other individuals. Gambling is wrong because it is inconsistent with the work ethic of scripture. Gambling is wrong because it tends to be habit forming. This for you, these points are not Islamic points, even though they are. This is a biblical perspective of gambling. This is what Christian scholars extracted from the Bible have highlighted about gambling. That's what they've concluded. And we're well before that. We, we, these people, they've forgotten religion. That's why for them, all these calamities we began with, they won't turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're just worried about their super Saturday. They're worried about their drunkenness, how much they're going to drink, how they're going to rejoice themselves. That's all that they're worried about. They're not worried about the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not worried about calamity. They're not worried about difficulty. They're not worried about that. They're only worried about their khamar, their khumur. Their alcohol, their addiction, their gambling, their fawahish, that's all that they're worried about. If the path is obstacle towards that, then that is their qiyamah. That is their day of judgment. As for us Muslims, we should awaken ourselves. We have the nusus, we have the Qur'an. Remind them about Allah. Remind them via the Qur'an. Whoever worries about the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should awaken our society, awaken ourselves. Do not make yawmul jum'ah. Do not make salawat a ritual practice amongst ourselves. That is a key lesson. Don't make it a ritual practice. Make it a ritual practice that changes you, that inspires you to become a better individual, devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thus we find that if we don't change ourselves, then we find that these calamities may Allah forbid continue inside our society until we begin to make the effort of changing ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq and ability to make that effort inside our personal lives, within ourselves, to change ourselves internally, externally, develop a relationship in these days that we're still under a great deal of lockdown that in privacy that we develop a focus and devotion towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because al-ibadah fi sir ibadah in, in, in secrecy in privacy and, and pondering and reflecting what tafakkur what tadabbur is what will awaken the soul of the Muslim make them reflect because when a person is left in solitude that's when they begin to reflect that on that day just like I'm here lonely that someone may think that I'm lonely at the moment. On that day you'll be lonely inside the grave. You're going to be lonely inside the grave. You're going to be lonely on the day of judgment standing there. 
all on your own, standing there. So a person, when they're prepared inside his dunya, ma yahtam. A person doesn't worry about this plague, this difficulty, because a person psychologically has prepared themselves with what? With meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the thabat and ability to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state of happiness and enjoy and content inside our heart that we want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 